latest news. Right now at noon, the line's already out. The door business is booming at some of your favorite Philly spots ahead of the holiday weekend. Plus, a new way to test for COVID-19. We're going to tell you about the method that just got emergency use authorization from the FDA. And at least 20 people have been shot in the last 24 hours. The spike in violence is only adding to major concerns about safety in Philadelphia. Welcome to CBS 3 Hour News at noon, now streaming live on CBS News Philly. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Janelle Burrell, and we begin this noon with our continuing coverage of Philadelphia's gun violence crisis. Four people were killed, 16 others injured in the last 24 hours. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Howard Monroe. Shock turned into a crime scene. An overnight shooting victim was driven to Chop, where he later died. The shooting happened along Redfield Street. Police say 18 shots were fired from two separate guns. Nearby homes and cars were also struck, but police say no one else was injured. The victim is 31 years old. Police are now looking for who drove the victim to the hospital. The person who drove the victim to the hospital in that shot off Kia fled the scene. So we're holding the vehicle at Chop as a crime scene but we don't have the individual that drove that vehicle. Police tell us this is at least the fourth person shot and killed in the city since Thursday morning. Two men in southwest Philadelphia are among the victims who lost their lives. Just after 10 o'clock Thursday night, police say they found the two 32-year-old men shot multiple times on 67th Street and Greenway Avenue. Emergency crews rushed them to Penn Presbyterian Medical Center, where both men died. We found 13 spent shell casings, so we know 13 shots were fired from a semi-automatic weapon. The 13 spent shell casings are very close to, just a few feet away from where both of the victims had collapsed. Also, yesterday afternoon, a man was shot and killed on Manton Street in Queen Village. No arrests have been made in any of these homicides. Howard Monroe, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. There's another news here this noon. A fire engine and a tractor trailer collide in Delaware, leaving three firefighters injured. This is Chopper 3 over the scene here last night on I-295 near Route 13 in Newcastle. Now, the fire truck from the Minkadale Fire Company, which was responding to a car accident, ended up on its side. Three firefighters were left with non-life-threatening injuries. Well, yesterday's storms have made for a much cooler afternoon as we head into the weekend. We stopped by Rittenhouse Square this morning where lots of people were still soaking up the springtime weather. Let's check in now with meteorologist Larissa Brayu. And she has a look at the forecast. We have Passover starting tonight at sundown. Easter Sunday, just a couple of days away, so a lot of people eager to see how the weather's going to pan out for us, Larissa. But yeah, it's uh, looking nice out there right now. We're off to a really pleasant start on this Friday afternoon. You can see temperatures right behind I mean, 65 degrees, and we're also looking at just nothing but clear skies. It's been a really beautiful start to this Friday. It was on the chillier side. The temperatures were seasonably cool. It was just so warm yesterday that it probably felt like a jolt to the system. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these field-like temperatures. 65 degrees, the current field-like temp at dew point temperature sitting at 26, and winds right now are relatively light. But I'll tell you what, these winds will be kicking up as the afternoon goes on and they're out of the west-northwest right now, ranging at between 10 and 15 miles an hour. They should be kicking up closer to 20 mile an hour wind gusts here as we approach the afternoon. This is 4.30 in the afternoon, and you can see those winds pretty blustery outside, and that's probably the only thing to watch for this Friday. Saturday rolls around, and we'll see the same, just blustery conditions, but Saturday does come with a threat for a couple of showers and a few rumbles of thunder, and it's still going to be blustery and even a little bit cooler as we kick off our Sunday. So Easter Sunday looking like a big a change as far as our weather pattern, Jim. Thank you, Larissa. Appreciate it. Well, Easter, as we mentioned, is almost upon us. Many across our region are making sure they have all the essentials for Easter, including those delicious sweet oh, treats. what everybody's looking forward to. I'm this news reporter, Alicia Reed, is at a very busy bakery in North Philadelphia this afternoon. All right, Alicia, tell us what, what are people buying up? Hey there, Jim Janelle. The doors here at Denise's Deli opened around 9 o'clock, and employees have been going ever since. Take a look behind me. You can see the line. There's usually a line here every day, and that certainly hasn't changed today, especially this Easter weekend. People are coming out for all their usual treats, and this is definitely busy season for the crew here at Denise's.
businesses, but they've been doing this for nearly 30 years, so they're pretty good about planning. The manager tells me the system is foolproof and hasn't let them down yet. The decorators are here during the day, putting all the finishing touches. Bakers come in during the overnight hours and get to work, so all the goodness people walk into in the morning is freshly baked. The usual favorites are on deck this year, and customers can also enjoy a few Easter surprises. And it's not just here that's busy. Stock's Bakery in Fort Richmond has has had a long line of customers since the doors opened at 8 o'clock this morning. A number of customers called ahead to put their orders in, so pickup was much easier once they got inside. That shop is also famous for its pound cake. Cookies, donuts, pies, and other treats are also on display, ready to be sold. So regardless of where you end up finding your special Easter pastries, there's a lot of places to choose from. The staff has been working very hard to do something special. You may see some different cakes or different cupcakes or things and different types of bread and so forth. I had to get these. The personal peach cobbler and apple cobbler is the bomb. And uh, donuts for breakfast today. Oh, so you're starting the weekend off right now. Right now, yes. <laughs> Definitely ready for those thinking about coming out to Denise's to pick up their treats. Keep in mind, they close at 5 o'clock today. They reopen at 8 tomorrow, and they're definitely closed on Sunday. So keep all that in mind and come on out. Reporting live from North Philly, Alicia Reed, CBS 30 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Alicia. Federal health officials have approved the first breath test for COVID-19. The FDA granted emergency use authorization to inspect IR COVID-19 breathalyzer. The agency says the test sports chemical compounds associated with COVID infection and can give results in less than three minutes. The test is made to be used in medical offices and mobile testing sites. And a reminder, Philadelphia's mask mandate starts again on Monday. You'll have to wear a mask in indoor public spaces in the city. Businesses that require proof of vaccination will be exempt from the mandate. Philadelphia is the first major U.S. city to bring back an indoor mask mandate. And we'll continue to follow updates and mask guidance and other restrictions right here on CBS3. You can always get the latest on cbsphilly.com and our streaming service, CBS News Philly. Turning now to violence in the Middle East, more than 150 Palestinians were wounded in clashes with Israeli police in Jerusalem. Several police officers were also injured in that attack. It happened at the al Asqa Mosque, which is a site sacred to both Jews and Muslims. Police say hundreds of suspects were arrested. Clashes at that mosque last year helped spark an 11-day war with Hamas's militants in Gaza. And we're following some new developments in the war in Ukraine. Russia says it will now target Ukraine's capital in retaliation for what it says are attacks on Russian towns. Meantime, the U.S. is looking into ways to get weapons to the hands of the Ukrainian military. CBS News correspondent Natalie Brand reports from the White House. Missile strikes sent shockwaves through parts of Kyiv as Russians launched attacks on Ukraine's capital city. The fresh wave of strikes comes after Russian forces had pulled back from the area, motivating some residents to return. Russia's defense ministry says it will increase the number and scale of missile strikes in the future. This comes after Ukraine says it struck the flagship of Russia's Black Sea fleet, causing it to sink. The Moskva had been used to launch precision-guided cruise missiles into Ukraine. We are looking to facilitate the supply of coastal defense and anti-ship capabilities to the Ukrainians so that they can't be menaced from the sea. And uh, that is being actively worked, uh, and um, I'll leave it at that. As the U.S. ramps up arms to Ukraine, CBS News has confirmed that Russia sent a diplomatic note to the Biden administration warning the U.S. to stop. President Biden authorized an additional $800 million in defense assistance this week, which will include new weapons for the Ukrainians, such as howitzer cannons. While some of these systems, the radar, the, the howitzers, will require some familiarization and some basic training, it's not going to, it's not exorbitant. It, it won't take a long time. It won't require a large pool of trainees. The Pentagon says the training isn't expected to take more than a few days and will likely take place in Europe. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House.
The Sixers making a run in the playoffs. Game one is tomorrow against the Raptors. Ahead, what the team thinks needs to happen for them to have a shot at an NBA title. All right, plus it is a big day at the White House. We'll tell you what's happening for the first time in two years.